Welcome back to another tutorial. So in this week's tutorial, we'll be covering um, how to shoot projectiles um, from the player and the projectiles will go where the mouse is clicked. So this will add a bit of a bullet hell type scenario to our game. But before we get there, I just want to go through what I want the game to be. So the idea thus far is we are like a bounty hunter that hunts down monsters but we, uh, we are also a blood mage, so we get our abilities from using our own life force. I think that would add a bit of an interesting twist on the whole bullet hell type game scenario. So every time we shoot a projectile, we want our player's health to go down. It will also force the player to not just spam projectiles everywhere on the screen. It will allow us to like force them to almost strategize. But we will also get blood back per um, monster we killed. So we at least can regen it as well as passive regeneration. Now, to get there, we first need to create our projectile. So go over to your source file, click new, call this projectile.hx. So we want a projectile class that extends the FLX sprite so it'll be a sprite similar to our player and let's just create the constructor x float y float so this is the position where the um, projector will be spawned and we can just call super x and y cool that's the basic sprite class setup now i also want our character to have the ability to shoot multiple different projectiles so like fire ice poison electricity all of those things each with their own special ability and effect on the uh, monster that they impact or maybe if we so desire we can also make them injure the player itself they'll also add a bit of annoyance um if we wanted to create a bit of a harder game mode for more stronger players or more what were the more skilled players so to, to hold, we want a data type that holds all the type of projectiles we can have so that we can just specifically say we want this type of projectile rather than just passing a number or passing like a string or something. We want to pass a specific type, a specific data type. Now, the easiest way to create your own custom data types is to use an enumerator which you um, call an enum in most programming languages so we got enum projectile type and the hacks programming language expects you to capitalize all the types of projectiles in this case so we would go fire bolt ice bolt poison Bolt, ah, bolt, and then shock bolt. That's if my dumbass can spell it. And B O L T, not Y. Cool. So that's all the types of um, projectiles we currently have. We might add some, a few later on, especially around the time when we start working on the boss character. Maybe a few homing projectiles. That could be a fun thing to add. Cool. Now that we have the types of projectiles we'll need for the moment, we also need to install. Um, well, now we need to work on the variables of the projectile, the logic of the projectile, and things like that. So first, we need to have a private static inline variable called movement speed of type flow which equals 600. Now you don't have to use the um, 600 variable. You can use whatever you want. I just found from testing that it's both fast enough that it annoys the player, but also not that fast that you can't like see it just flies away on your screen. You can still follow it to a uh, fair degree. Next, we want to say the target, which is of type FLX, Point. and let me just import that ah. import okay next we also want the type of projectile 
projectile, projectile. <laughs> Hi. Cool. Now to um, set those variables in the constructor. So target is of type FLX wind. And the type is of type projectile type. That's a lot of types in one sentence. It feels almost broken. So target equals target and the underscore type equals type. Cool. That's if I can spell it. Cool. So next we also want to create say what the um projectile's color would be. Um Personally, I'm a programmer, I'm not a designer or an artist. So I'm holding off creating the pixel art until the last moment I possibly can. So for now, let's just stick to programmer art, something that we can use that's not ugly. So we can just at least see something on the screen, see if it works, see if we like the feel of the game before we actually create the, um, the look of the game. So switch type. Um, for the switch, we can use either the underscore type, which is the um, class variable, or we can just use the type that's passed into the constructor. I don't really think there's any reason not to use one above the other. You might prefer using just underscore type, but at this point, they are both the same. You've got to be shitting me. Sorry about that. Uh, my dog just got annoyed with someone walking past the gate. My dog's very territorial in that way. So any case, so the switch case we want it if it's of type fire bolt, we want to make a graphic of a size five by five with a color of color color. Um, because it's a fire bolt, I think red would work very well to like show that it's fire. And also you might realize here that it like yells at us saying we have unmatched patterns. We still need to do the ice, poison and shock bolts. So to do that, we can just copy, uh, paste that four times and we can say ice. Poison and then shop. Now for ice, we can go with something with more blue. Poison, uh, green obviously. And then shock, we can go with purple. Awesome. So that creates the graphics for it. Now this part, um, so when we click, we will get the mouse coordinates on the screen where we clicked. We would then pass the coordinates into the target. Then we want to tell the um, projectile to move to that target. Now, currently, Hacks Flixel has a function called uh, move to target or something like that, or move to point. But the issue with that is it just moves up to that point and then stops like two or three pixels in front of that point and doesn't go close enough or onto that actual point. So we can't really say move to that point and then check if it's on that point and then um, like delete it. We, it just doesn't work like that. I, it took me like half a day to figure it out how to do this. And in the end, it was very simple and I kicked myself with being this much we needed. So this part we is you'll recognize from the player movement. So we say velocity dot set um, movement speed and then zero and then the velocity dot rotate around zero zero and then let me just type this out and I'll explain it. Angle between, I'll probably have to import this first. 
dot angle between point this uh, target and then true because we want it in degrees. So what we say is we so it's the same as with the player movement. We move it at the we move it in the x axis um, at movement speed. Then we rotate it to face the angle of to face the target. So we use the angle class. We say angle between points. This point. So this where we spawned the sprite where it currently is. So the x and y position. The angle between this sprite and the target which is an x which is an, a point will pass into the constructor and then we want it in degrees because rotate um, takes it, it in degrees and that should be about it also just for future reference and because hacks is a object oriented programming language we want to specific we want to create a getter for the type um, of projectile so get type of projectile type return type cool now i if you're new to programming you would be like why can't we just make that a public and access it from wherever and you are right we can do that and it should work but the thing is if you go to like university or programming courses or like even on udemy they say that you should rather use getters and setters as a type of like a, a layer between the class and the data types inside the class so if the user doesn't accidentally change it without knowing you specifically have to call the set method to change it and if you don't want it to be changeable you don't have to create a set function it's a bit annoying when you start but as you go on you might like start getting more used to it now that we have the projectile um, object we have to go to play state now the only issue is we can't go into the player object and from there tell it to create a new projectile because play is a type of um sprite so and a sprite can't instantiate new sprites onto the state it just won't allow it you don't have the add function inside of um a sprite so we have to specifically go into the um play state to do this so we'll create a private function called shoot And it's of type void. So we say if if lxg dot mouse dot just press, and this will probably ask me to import this here. So this is we specifically check to see if the left mouse button has just been pressed, and if it has, we get the mouse position equals flx g dot mouse dot get position and you will notice that this is a getter so as you see there they use it and then we want to instantiate a new projectile That was weird. Let me guess. Oh, player dot x, player dot y, mouse position, and then for now we can just say fire bolt just to test this out to see whether it works or not. So we we spawn the um, projectile at the player's x and y position. We set the target to the mouse's position where it was clicked, and we say the projectile is of type firebolt. Now, if we try to run this, let me just click on the right screen. 
I have the source code for the project open on my other monitor. I have already written most of this code. So now let's just first see if we can move the player. So the movement still works. Now let's click. Well, that was a fail. Oh, uh, yeah. I found such a dumbass. Wow. Okay, so the smarter people watching this, and hopefully you're smarter than me, but if you are, why are you watching this? I guess we created the function, but we never actually called the function to check. So every um, on every frame, we want to check whether or not we should shoot a projectile or not. Now let's try this again, and hopefully it will work. It's been a, I woke up very early. Let's just go with that. Okay, now let's try. And you can see it just keeps going. We can create as many as we want to. And But we can't just hold in the mouse. We have to click, 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 click. And also notice it gets spawned from the uh, top left corner of the player. Now you can see from here, whereas over here you can see it like sort of overlaps. I'm pointing to the screen like a dumbass. You can like sort of see it overlap with the sprite over there. Okay, cool. Well, that's all for this week. Now, just before you like go on and watch something else, I just want to say I created a Twitter account where I practically post about my video tutorials and the funny things that I do whilst creating the source code for each tutorial. I will link uh, the link in the bottom below. Have a nice day and thank you for watching. Bye.